Hello everyone. This short video is about the latest changes to the DHIS2 to Rapid Pro integration middleware. This middleware implementation has three key goals and deliverables. The first goal is to have a routine synchronization of Rapid Pro contacts with DHIS2 users. Here we are synchronizing DHIS2 users having valid phone numbers to Rapid Pro as Rapid Pro contacts. The second goal is to have a webhook consumer to receive aggregate reports from Rapid Pro and transfer them to DHIS2 as data value sets. The last goal is to have automated reminders to Rapid Pro contacts for overdue aggregated reports. We can identify three key components in the high level architecture of this implementation. So obviously we need a Rapid Pro instance and a DHIS2 instance and then we have the custom made uh, camel and spring based middleware. So when we are synchronizing contacts the middleware reads users having valid phone numbers from DHIS2 and then it create to update rapid pro users and when uh, receiving aggregated reports from rapid pro users we are SMS or any other communication mechanism available for Rapid Pro, the Rapid Pro flow calls the webhook implemented on the middleware and then middleware translates that payload into a DHIS2 data value set payload and updates the DHIS2 instance with the corresponding data values. So let's first look at how we can start the middleware. I already have the pre-built uh, DHIS2 Rapid Pro jar file under, under the target folder and then uh, this is how I can start the jar as a service. So let's first look at how we can uh, start the middleware. I already have the jar file pre-built under the target folder and this is how you can start the jar application. So I can specify DHIS2 URL and the credentials for DHIS2 instance. I'm using the publicly hosted uh, play DHIS2 instance. And uh, these are the credentials for that instance. And then we have Rapid Pro hosted under one of our domains. And then I have to specify the uh, API token for the Rapid Pro instance. And you can obtain the API token by navigating to your profile. And under here you have the API token. You just have to copy and paste it. And then uh, I have specified the sync schedule expression, which is for contact synchronization. This specifies how often we need to do the contact synchronization. So in this case, I have scheduled the contact synchronization to happen at every 30 seconds just for the demo purpose. And I have created a uh, SH file by specifying all these parameters uh, just for clarity. I can start the program by running this SH file. Then it's going to start a Spring Boot application and uh, Apache Tomcat instance and expose uh, the webhook and the rest of the services via a port that we specify under the uh, configuration file. So here is the configuration file. I'm not going to go through uh, all the configurations here because uh, we have them on our documentation. Uh, the only thing uh, to note here is the server port. So if you want to change the port, you can change the port here and rebuild the file and then it will run on the uh, desired port. Okay, 
uh, now let's look at how the contact synchronization uh, works so in order for contact synchronization to work uh, the middleware picks only DHIS2 users having valid phone numbers and they will be periodically synchronized to RapidPro as RapidPro contacts and the existing contacts which matches with the uh, DHIS2 users will be updated if there are any updates to the DHIS2 user and apart from updating the contact number uh, in order for the rest of the flows to work we need the DHIS2 organization unit and the DHIS2 user ID so the middleware will synchronize those details as additional fields into the RapidPro contacts so uh, let's go to the contacts page of the RapidPro instance and we currently don't have any contacts and uh, our middleware is currently running so let's uh, log in to the DHIS2 instance uh, so currently the DHIS2 instance uh, does not have any users having valid phone numbers so let's go ahead and uh, update some of the users to uh, have valid phone numbers so I'm going to uh, select this user and add a valid phone number here So as I mentioned, uh, the concept contact synchronization ha happens uh, at every 30 seconds. So let's wait for it to complete one round of synchronization. And uh, please disregard this error. It's, it's actually a warning where it says uh, some of the contacts in the DHIS2 uh, does not have valid phone numbers. In order for a phone number to be valid, it should uh, have the country code so uh, in the play instance there are some contacts which does not have country codes okay now the synchronization happened uh, once so let's refresh and see whether uh, it has synchronized uh, the contact that we just updated yeah so it has synchronized the contact and if I go into the contact I can see that apart from updating the phone number uh, it has additionally added DHIS2 organization unit ID uh, and also DHIS2 user ID so these IDs will be used in the aggregation flow uh, to determine the organization unit of the events that are submitted by this particular user so let's add uh, or edit one more contacts uh, I just have to add a valid phone number and let's wait for the middleware to complete another round of contact synchronization it's updated too and it it's going to have the same custom fields updated so that's about contact synchronization and now let's see uh, how we can achieve the second goal of the middleware which is uh, getting aggregated reports from rapid pro and updating them as data value sets in DHIS2 so the main job of uh, the middleware in aggregated value synchronization is reading the aggregated values from rapid pro which comes in uh, this format which is a very minimal format which can be accommodated within an SMS and then translate uh, them to a format which is compatible with DHIS2 
and as I mentioned previously the second task of the middleware is to set the correct organization unit into the data values by uh, reading them from the corresponding user. So in order to demo this uh, um, integration uh, we have created a, a dummy rapid pro flow which is about uh, collecting information about OPD attendance. So this is the expected message format for this flow and we have the prefix apt uh, this is used by rapid pro internally to identify which flow should be triggered when a message is received um, so the first thing we are doing in this flow is removing that apd command so we are removing the apd command here and then say uh, sending the rest of the message uh, through the flow and then we process the OPD new attendees uh, which is the first number uh, in my message and then the second number of the message is OPD total attendance and then we do a validation here uh, because the total attendance should be greater than OPD new attendees because the total attendance include new attendance, attendance and the old attendance and if the validation passes uh, it will extract the second number into the OPD total attendance and uh, save that uh, into this result name uh, and then it will extract the OPD expected mothers um, and then we have OPD missed appointments so likewise it will extract all uh, four numbers into uh, different variables and again we have a validation and then here comes the uh, most important part of the integration so at the end uh, so now we have uh, extracted all, all the numbers and uh, assigned them to uh, flow specific variables and then we call the webhook so the uh, middleware that we have started has been mapped to uh, a domain name uh, to make things easier when integrating with rapid pro and then we can call this webhook by specifying a uh, data set id of dhis2 uh, in the query parameters and in addition to the data set id we can specify report period offset which is optional uh, and defaults to minus one uh, the purpose of report period offset is uh, as you know in DHIS2 uh, when we are reporting aggregated events uh, we are reporting I mean it allows only to report the uh, final period or the period that just ended so that's why uh, uh, we have provided uh, the capability to provide the report period offset and defaults default that to minus one and then uh, for testing purposes optionally you can specify or override the organization unit ID if you don't specify the organization unit ID in the query parameter as a query parameter uh, the uh, middleware should read will read that from the user and plug it in but uh, due to the limitations of the rapid pro simulator uh, we actually can't uh, specify the uh, uh, you know additional fields for the dummy user that is being used by the simulator so we, we don't have the capability to specify the organization unit ID or the DHIS2 specific uh, custom parameters that we have added for the, for the synchronized uh, contacts so that's why uh, we have to uh, or oh, we are specifying organization unit uh, here just for the demo purpose so now let's see uh, how we can create 
or configure the DHIS2 to accept uh, these aggregated values. So I'm going to demo only the OPD uh, new attendees case here. So we have to go to the maintenance app and then uh, we have to create a new uh, data element to capture the OPD new attendees. So I will name that as OPD new attendees and uh, as a short name I will add something and then the most important thing is we have to match the code of the data element with the result name that we specified in the rapid pro flow so i'm going to copy it and then add that as the code and uh, the domain is going to be aggregate and yeah those are the only configurations that we need to do at the moment and then since we are using the uh, data value sets api we need to create a new data set and since i am demoing only the opd new attendees this data set will only have one data element which is the one that we just created so the data set name can be something like this opd attendance and uh, we will be uh, I mean I will set the period type to weekly it can be monthly as well uh, anything and then I will add my data element into the uh, newly created data set and I will um, assign the data set uh, to an organization unit and save. Now I might have to uh, update some sharing settings as well. Now let's see whether we can access this uh, new data set from the built in applications of DHIS2. So I assigned uh, my data set to this organization unit and if I scroll down I can see that I it shows the OPD attendance data set and I uh, set the period type to weekly so it is showing me a bunch of uh, periods weekly periods and if I select that uh, it provides me the capability to uh, add values for the opd new attendees data element so now uh, since i just created the uh, data set i might have to copy the id of the data set and update that uh, in the uh, webhook so this is going to be the ID of the data set and I believe the organization unit uh, has the correct ID. So yeah, it has the correct ID already. So now we can use the simulator to uh, send a message and then it's going to go through all those validations and it sends us a, a summary of what we have just entered uh, so we have sent 10 uh, new OPD attendees 15 total 5 EMTCT and 3 expected mothers and at the end if the webhook sends us a uh, 204 error code or a, sorry a 204 status code uh, it's going to 
send us a message back saying the result has been sent to the webhook and if the webhook uh, does not send a 200 uh, error code it's going to send us a message saying that the webhook call failed now uh, if we go back to the data entry application and if I select the OPT attendance and select the minus one uh, period I can see that uh, it has received the value that we just sent uh, uh, from the rapid pro so if I need to update that value uh, I can do that just by sending a new message so let's uh, let's make it 12 so it says results uh, sent to the webhook now if I if I uh, select that period I can see that it has been updated with the uh, the new value and also uh, if I change the offset to minus 2 I can allow the users to enter values for one period before the last one so let me send the same message now if I select the uh, week 31 that has been populated with uh, the value that we just sent and the rest of the periods are empty so that's about the core functionalities that we provide by the dhis2 to rapid pro integration middleware and in addition to the core functionalities we provide uh, some tools to monitor and uh, troubleshoot the errors that could uh, raise from the middleware so we basically provide two tools for this purpose the first one is howtio which is a jmx backed uh, tool where you can use to read uh, jmx stats reported by the middleware in a graphical user interface and the second one is a built-in H2 database where we send all the errors uh, or the dead letters. So in order to access the HubTO interface, you have to go to the uh, management path uh, of your domain. And uh, the default username and password are uh, DHIS2 rapid pro and the password is same and here you can see that uh, as we are using camel to do this integration uh, how to lists down all the camel specific routes and it also uh, shows how many times uh, each route has been executed and whether there were any failures and things like that so if for instance uh, the DHIS2 route has been executed three times and there are no any failures uh, and this is the route that handles uh, aggregated uh, values so if I send uh, one more message through the through this route and if I refresh my how to you uh, interface it's going to show as four messages because it counts the last message that I just sent and similarly uh, you can use uh, this interface to explore uh, other um, monitoring tools that are provided by Havtio and one more important thing is uh, you can explore the error log so since uh, I mentioned that we are continuously uh, printing some 
uh, error logs here uh, regarding the um, invalid phone numbers uh, that are available in the DHIS2 instance. We can see that uh, that error message continuously getting updated in real time on the uh, UI of Houtier. And the next tool that we provide is uh, the dead letter channel, uh, which is um, provided through the uh, H2 database. And here, if there are any message failures, uh, those will be sent directly to the dead letter channel table. So right at the moment we don't have any failures. So if there are any failures, this is where uh, where you can uh, look into those. And uh, if you want to manually replay them, uh, that's up to you. So that concludes the uh, demo on DHIS2 to Rapid Pro integration. And in this uh, short video, we have uh, discussed about the architecture of the implementation and the core functionalities, as well as the uh, monitoring tools that we provide uh, through the uh, integration middleware. So thank you very much for watching.